Hello YouTube, I welcome you to on this fine day, and this is my Kinnon Bonder Prodigy Historic Brawl deck. This is probably currently the most busted Historic Brawl deck of them all, because it is just way too fast and way 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 too consistent in what it does. So Kinnon is essentially a hasty mana dork in a right setup, because he is a two mana creature that gives you mana like through your other creatures but he does that immediately and the downside of other simic decks where you can jump sometimes ramp into nothing because you don't have anything big to play is completely negated with him because he is also a mana sink at the same time so this deck is just really 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 consistent and in general yeah it's pretty much simic good stuff but with a few tweaks here and there. For example, we don't play um, the... What's it called? The wizard. Gadwick. That guy. We don't play that one because that is a human and also doesn't do anything when it enters the battlefield. Because Kin and Bonner's Prod Bonner Prodigy only pulls non-human. That's only also the reason why we don't play Agent of Treachery. There is one really bad pull from the deck, and that's Hydroid Crisis, because, well, yeah, it just dies. But I think Hydroid Crisis also fills a different role, where it's better to play, like, on X equals 4 or something like that, um, because it gains your life against aggro and whatnot. So I think that's a decent inclusion. But other than that, we do play cards like Kogla, the Titan Ape, because when he enters the battlefield, he fights something, he destroys artifacts or en enchantments, and he can return Kinnon to the hand and protect himself, so all around a great card. Tishana, Voice of Thunder, just instantly refills your hand, like, can draw you like 15 cards at a time. It's just disgusting. And we have super, super fast starts, because... Kinnon says permanence, uh, non-land permanence, so you can go uh, turn one like whatever, tap land, and turn two, Kinnon, Mox Amber, Mana Dork, and you're good to go. Like, it, you have six mana on turn three if you do that. But there are, like, times where you can just have six mana on turn two as well. So, yeah, cards like Lane of Abundance really help the explosive uh, nature of this deck. Um, we do play 23 lands because we have so many mana drugs and usually we we don't really end up with more than four lands in a game because we're just killing our opponents so fast. Anyways, uh, let's jump into the games and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, we are up against dinosaurs. And... Uh... Ooh, that's spicy. A double deck, essentially. Okay. Let's see where we where can we go from here. So we essentially have two dead cards with end race and massive interpolation, meaning and essentially three dead cards, right? Cards that don't just go insanely ham. We basically need to draw another land with this hand and we go first, so I think we can do more cards than that. Okay, that's another mulligan. That seems fine. Yeah, I can de deal with that. Um, don't need the nether hole. Okay, maybe we will find a one drop. I think we already have all the necessary lands that we want, so the question is do we want a 3 mana dork or a 2 mana dork? So we go island here, tapped, and this druid of the cull. 3 mana. Yeah, we need to take the elfheim druid to keep up disdainful stroke, I think. Otherwise we currently can't do that with our hand. Because we only have one blue source and the engineer requires a blue source and they want to keep up the protection. It's not too bad that we essentially lose out on one potential mana. And maybe I draw another blue source, so could have picked the engineer, but this is the safer pick. 
Uh, they are talking to some dinosaurs. No, commune with dinosaurs, not... Oh, <laughs> there he is again. Doesn't matter. Hello, buddy. We are playing Dork that they know about. Oh, maybe we should have taken the druid in case of a shock. But they don't seem to have shock. Oh, and perfect. Um... Yeah. I think I will just play the engineer here. Uh, the, the druid, I mean. Right? Or do I play Kitten? Just so risky. But maybe the stat is way too fast for them to deal with. So this is their opportunity to cast a focus spell, and they don't. So that is perfect. And by me. Get you in there. Yes. Yep. Garen break. You. Next bloom. And we could activate Kinnon. But I'm not going to, because I want to keep up the disdainful stroke. Or maybe I could have kept Cannon open and put and played in their end step. Let's see, what are they about to play? Nope. No. Not going to happen. And we're just popping off this turn. And we can the Garen brick and that pays for the Kinnon as well which is quite amazing if activate Nezahal activate if Kandrood activate with activate with Activate. Yep. Draw three. But Wait, how much mana does this produce? We have two, so that's one, two, three, four, yeah. Yep. Back. Temporal Sundering. And that should be game. GG! No, oh, Brokos, Apex of Forever, I believe. One of the new commanders in the set. Yeah, Brokos, Apex of Forever. I am really interested in how they have built the deck. That's what I'm really curious about. Okay, this is almost the perfect start. Um, a blue source would be nice, but we do have the goose to play the Kinnon and... Uh, we're just popping off from here. Um, is there a reason to play Mox now? Yes, there is. Spell Pierce. So that's why we're doing it now. Let's see. Our opponent is on the do nothing plan currently. Duress? Elves, okay. Yeah, so that seems like a Kinnon for me. Yeah, Blue Source would have really, really helped here because we could have played both dorks, uh, dorks by then. But this is fine because this also adds blue. It's just a bit slower. That way. But yeah, I would have loved to done tap blue. So Kinnon will die to the murder rider. That's okay with me. So yeah. 
seems like I'm left with almost no mana again, finally. <laughs> Let's see. Temple of Mystery. They do have three mana available. Um, do we just play the Leyland of Abundance next turn? If we draw land, it's very likely that we do. Oh, we did not draw land, so we are just playing Kinnon and activating the boost from there. Kinnon will probably meet his friend, assess his trophy. No attacks. Or not. So, our current situation is quite okay, I believe. If they kill Kinnon one more time, it can get problematic, but we're doing just fine on two lands right now. Uh, a third uh, land, preferably a blue source, would be great, I believe. Um, okay. Uh, rip my dear friend Kinnon. Maybe they're just too greedy. No, they're not. Yep, activate the goose. And put it into the command zone. Our do opponent is doing a great job of keeping us up of foreign mana. Um, Yeah, I think I will just play Leyline and Hydrate Crisis. Do I even Hydrate Crisis? Hmm. So if we do Hydrate Crisis for two, um, we have something that can challenge the Garrick in there. The Gilded Goose will probably force the block. Um, one, two, three, four. Right? Yeah. We don't. Our play pattern next turn is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have one, two, three, four mana on top of that. And we will play Crisis for four anyways. No, for two anyways. So. I think this is the correct play. Yeah, now we can Signet essentially for free with Kinnan. <clears throat> Which is great. You're not scared it really of dogs, is. are you? But yeah, like, ah, oh, damn. The, that murder's right really came in clutch for them. So, currently they just played Arcane, Arcane Signet and are thinking again. I am hoping that we don't see a Ritual of Soot here. Like, I really, really hope that otherwise it is probably game over for us. Um, yeah, otherwise... So can we play our End Race Foreigners next turn? We likely can, right? But is that better than other options? Oh yeah, beautiful. So, end race would be those, right? Yeah. And we could force the double block here in the air. No, we could just straight up kill Garruk. Yeah, I think that's what we're about to do. I think that seems reasonable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I cannot play the signet beforehand. Or can I just do this? Then one, two, three, four, five. No, that's not enough. I think just Andres is good enough. So Garrick die is guaranteed here. Which really, uh, which is really, really nice for our situation. Because if we just Remember, attacked the Hydra cases, they could have double blocked and... Garrick would have not died, but this way we ensure the kill. We still can't play mass manipulation. 
It's fine, I guess. But sooner or later, sooner or later, we really want to be able to play that card. So our opponent has what? Six mana? Seven? Yeah, seven. One, two, three. Oh, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight. Oh, that's great. Okay. What is lurking on the top of our deck? Blue source? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will just dump up my old land, I guess. Yep, Nyx Lotus as well. And we're going to swing with the Endress Forerunners. If they double block with the Wolf and the Krasis, the Krasis will die. I'm absolutely fine with that, actually. Because that means our finale, if we get to draw one, can refetch the end rates from the graveyard. Because finale also revives creatures uh, from the graveyard, which is not too relevant, but in the single format it can really, really shine. Set a stop in the end step. We can make a token uh, in response... A, a food token? Yep. In response to that, create a food. Because this currently taps for two. Command zone. Take action and take a beautiful, beautiful blue source out of the deck. Currently think of, uh, thinking of a reason why they could play Brokos over Muldrotha. Because Muldrotha is generally the better value commander overall, I believe. So either they are just playing it because they can, or want, or they have some mutate synergies in the deck. And I'm currently thinking about the mutate synergies, and the first that comes to my mind right now is Dirgebat. Minus would be the correct choice, I believe. Yeah. Beautiful. So, mana dorks are our bread and butter. But, here's the big but. If we sacrifice those two, we have one, two, three, four, yeah, one, two, hmm, I think I will use the goose, a yeah, goose and Elfheim Druid. The reason why we're keeping the crisis around is because we're going to steal the Lily with the mass manipulation. And we want to be able to have a blocker in the air. Okay, so two more mana. Okay, they're passing the turn to me. Let's see. So, can we play a mass manipulation off of that. I believe we can, right? So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, we can absolutely play mass manipulation off this. Oh, and it's not going to be a small one. Tails and Oh my god, this is amazing. I love this already. So we are forcing the block on the goose. And end the turn. Okay. Funnily enough, this doesn't change our next turn. We are still going to use Kin and Mass Manipulation and steal their Lily. But they are. They've just bought themselves a turn, I guess. 
Constant Brute Sundering would be a really, really nice top deck. Like, it would be amazing. What are they holding up? Three mana? Good help is easy to find in war. One mana. One mana. Two mana. Yeah, two mana. They are holding up two mana. Why are they holding up two mana? Because they shocked that in. Um... We don't have the goose around anymore, so we we're eating that food. My turn. I do think that's the point where we just steal the incubation root and the lily. That is good enough. Or what happens if we do this right now? No, we can't play cannon at all. We need to one, two. Three, four, five. They're holding up. No, they're not holding up wheel as well. So we could steal one more thing, but I'm playing around quench here. Um, if they have negate, this is going to be backbreaking. Uh, X equals three. Give me your mana dorks. Thank you. We're stealing this one because it has higher potential uh, upside. Double blue. Counter spell. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god, this is such a cool match. And we can pressure the lily even more. Damn, this is amazing. You'll pay for that. The keep safe. Oh yeah. I think I will... Yeah, I think I need to add that to the deck. Maybe in a later version. Okay. So... What's the current, sp the current situation? Our opponent is looking at our stuff. There are... Oh no, casualties. So... We are suffering from uh, heavy casualties, I guess? <laughs> Putrid, but effective. But so far... This is just... Uh, Sultai, right? So, I'm just failing to understand why they are playing this commander. Okay. Brokos. And, yeah, they're just pressing our life total, but we're at 29. We are chilling. So, what is missing? So, mana and mana, and even more mana got denied. Okay, this is a 9-9, nine, nine, so that is fine by me. Not blocking, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My god, we can't even play our commander. Shana would be a nice pickup. No attacks. So, what's next? We are just at the mercy of uh, of our deck, essentially. But luckily, we got that swing in with the Hydra Crisis on the Liliana, because oh my God, this is so bad! Oh my God, I'm totally getting beaten up right here. So if they always held up um, keep safe and tails end, because we had a turn where we played Kinnan, wanted to play Kinnan into the uh, mass manipulation. So the question was that they always had those two cards in hand, or uh, good game. Did they always have two cards in hand, or did we ju were just unlucky and uh, picked the wrong card essentially? 
But damn, this was an amazing game. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. Anyways, great, great game. On to the next one. Okay, we are playing against Better. Um, how good is the start, really? Seems pretty decent in my eyes. Tried. Okay, they are probably mulliganing for removal. Temple of Triumph coming down, scrying to the top. A bit late, but at the same time it's totally not late because we can tap the signet. Everything's cool over here. Loose. Fountain of Renewal. Gaining life. Sure. And what are we about to do? We are about to do something mean here. Nissa is coming down. Classing a forest and keeping up. It's one time. So I guess that's a decent amount of mana. We are end-stepping the ones up on time to see what they play first. Soul Warden. I'm absolutely fine with them just gaining life, to be honest. And once upon a time in their end-step. What are we trying to find? Well, this mine zone would be appealing, right? Uh, just the building pool seems perfect right now. So, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, how much mana is that? Yeah, we are one short, I believe, from a finale. X equals ten. But I do think this. Currently is perfect. Yeah, sure. Yep. Do, do something like this, right? Rise, my friend. Yep. And the turn. And we're probably not blocking. Some. Well, I think we should block with the Gilded Goose. Because after all, this is a Feather deck, and Feather is kind of known to play combat tricks. Turn of Legends. And Nyx Freeze Ram. Okay, so. We really want to jump for that Nissa. We really want. Uh, Okay, so walk with you, generate a food, and that's it. Okay, so what do we have here? This, 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 uh, we want to do like this. Untap that land. Behold, nature's true power. And... I believe this could be lethal, correct? Wait, let's let's go back. Oh, we can't. Don't think this is lethal at all. Wait, hold on. So that's seven plus um eight. 15, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, totally not lethal. So, you're going to play this for x equals 10. Sure. Hmm. 
One, two, three, four, submit four. Okay, where are we now? Nyx Plume Agent seems like a decent addition right now. Yeah, just slap down an Nyx Plume Agent. Create a humongous amount of mana. Resolve. Resolve. Forest for even more mana, and now we play our ritual known as the Mindstone. Because we paid for two mana for that, but it generates four now. <laughs> Which is hilarious. So let's see. Play the familiar. Have more green mana. And I think we can just Yeah, activate the cannon twice. Seems like a good deal. Uh, deal. And we're going to refill our hand. Well, not that it was really empty, right? Oh, sweet. We have a Mox Amber. And now we have Counterspell Backup. Yeah. And we could theoretically... Uh, <laughs> Activate cannon again from just the Smog's Amber, pretty much. But I'm just going to uh, kill them next turn. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, everything's fine here. And we pretty much have like counter spells against everything, board wipes. Trigger abilities, targeted removal, well, not against them. Because Veil of Summer is kind of a dead card right now. In this matchup. But it is too important for the meta. And when you catch somebody with it, you really do. It is... Yeah. This card is not okay. Absolutely not okay. It should not draw a card. Um, yeah, we can tail send that. Yep, and that is indeed GG. Okay, we are up against Brokos, Apex of Forever. So... Oh yes. Oh yes. Yes, this is a starting hand. All day, every day. <clears throat> okay. We're starting with the breeding pool. Land wolves and pass the turn. <clears throat> so what is the likelihood that they have Assassin's Trophy on turn two? Um, I don't know, but it's the only removal spell from the top of my head that is commonly run, and we're, if Kinnon survives this turn, we have all the protection in the world, and the, fast is, and the start is just way too fast for them. So that smells like Assassin's Trophy or a Mana Dog. Perfect, a Mana Dog. Okay. Let's see, let's see. I think we're just keeping it down. Because we if we had drawn a land we could activate cannon, like just wait it out and activate cannon. But this is fine. Oh it hex, end the turn and hold up double counter spell. Okay, he sacks the Evolving Wilds. Grabs probably a... Oh, a Black Source. Yeah. And we're going to spell Pierce the Maelstrom Pulse. Yep. Pass the 
turn. And do we have enough for a Sundering? Yes, we do. So we're going to do Sundering on the Pixie. Get a tempo advantage, play a mana dork, tag in and take off extra turn. Um, can we play the finale for x equals 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? The answer is absolutely not, so we're not going to do that. And we're going to grab another dork from the deck, attack with Kinnon, and hold back the Leaf Kindred to negate whatever they throw at us. Okay. Sure. And more ramp. Okay. Arbor. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's eleven. Wait, no, go back. Oops. I can't go back past the step. Oh, this is awkward. Okay. Let's do it like this. Untap all our lands. Submit. Now we can... Let's see. We can play Nyssa. Untap a land and... What then? Nyx Bloom. We can't play Nyx Bloom right now. Yeah, just miss a uh, untap the temple. We're not going to untap the forest. Because forests are a bit more important to us. If they double block this is super okay with me. And the caretaker will take care of everything. Obviously, this is a great, great position we're currently in. And nope, that is good game. Because we're just about to finally them for a devastation attack. Finally, x equals. Oh no. Do it like this. Untap you. And x equals 10. Good game. This is just a bit over around, uh, let's say, 100 damage in your average turn 4. Seems pretty decent to me. Seems pretty decent. Anyways, on to the next game. Okay, it seems we're up about Saprolinks. Up against Saprolinks, sorry. Um, Slimefoot the Stow away. Let's see. So, I'm not too worried about green because we usually are faster than green, but I'm worried about the black part. Because we don't like our stuff to get destroyed. Mm. But I think it should be fine. And... Oh yeah, there we go. So, what does this starting hand look like? This is a bad starting hand because we have two tap lands. Um, yeah, let's mulligan it. Yes, this is way better. Beautiful. And we have the spell pierce to protect the Kinnon. So, let's go. Island. And then we will probably play the Paradise Brood. Or, you know what we could do is... 
I don't think we are too worried about Slimefoot. Like, we could just keep up the tails end, but I'd rather just have a fast start. And honestly, I don't care at all if this is on the battlefield or not. So... Yeah, go on, opponent. Just play your stuff. So I would like to draw a blue source here. No luck on that side, I guess. So the question is... You know what I could do? Yeah. Can do it like this. And that way we keep up the spell pierce, which is really important, I think. Sure. So we can already play Nazal. Um, and that actually grows the Drover of the Mighty. And we have... Yeah, we still have enough mana up to uh, do stuff over here. Yeah, let's just play Nezal. And end the turn. So, what are they about to do? Maybe Death Sprout? Moment of the hunt is absolutely fine. Yeah, sure. Funnily enough, we could now uh, tails end that to effectively counter it, but I really just want to. Um, I just want to counter whatever they might do to interrupt us. <sighs> also, I think we have lethal next turn. With the finale of devastation, X equals ten and tutor up and raise four on us. So that seems great. And another thing here is um, if we draw the four on us, we can discard them with Nezal and then revive them with finale. Uh, no. I'm going to counter that. my turn and uh, good game <laughs> yeah we still have enough mana right oh no we don't one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no we didn't have enough anyways right yeah so let's grab do we just do x equals 8 to grab an end race like that? No. I think we're just trying to kill them. But how are we going to do that? Um, not sure, not sure. So we could go for a kin activation here. I do like that. Um, but I think I want to tap like this. Uh, undo that. Wait, and then activate Kinnon like this. This way we keep up the tails and end the spell pierce. Or we're just going to do that. Oh, I think I'm fine right now. Um, No need to overextend here. Um, <clears throat> we obviously have lethal next room. We can just activate kin in response to whatever they do. Yeah, let's spell pierce that. And activate. Yep, good game. Tashana, also to refill our hand. Anyways, GG. That was quite a quick game. So, we are playing against Joyro, Weatherlight Captain, and this is already a Decent start, yeah? I, I think this is a good start. 
Um, yeah, seems great. Even though we don't have a blue source, we can go Lano Elves into uh, Signet Garenbeek, turn 2. And uh, if we do find the Antec blue source, we're just like... Like, we're just popping off. Okay. Oh, the Assistant is one of the absolute key cards in a Jara deck. Because you can scry and draw at the same time. That card can get really out of hand. I'm not sure if I should go Signet Druid here or Signet Kinnon. Let's think, think about this. I think we have more... We have a better potential top deck in an untapped blue source if we do Signet Leafkin Druid now instead of Kinnon. Yeah, so the potential of this play is just higher, so we're doing that. Let's see. And we definitely want to... Yeah, now we... No, no, this is fine, because next turn we can just play a tapped Nyx Lotus and keep up a Disdainful Stroke to counter their Joyra. Um, yeah, seems nice. Sigh. Oh, damn. This can get ugly. Yep, just this. And... Yeah, let's do it like this, keep up Disdainful Stroke. Yes, thank you. It is indeed nice to play Nyx Lotus. Okay. They did not play... ...their uh, Jora. Presumably, presumably because they didn't draw land. Okay. I'll go to sir. Artificer's assistant, oh my god, comes in, and um, so yeah, I think we do it like this, and now we can in theory tap the Nyx Lotus for blue, or we can just play the Nazal. So the advantage of this play is um, that we can... Bell Pierce something or Disdainful Strong something. Yeah, I think I will just relax for a moment here. And if they have a non creature that we want to counter, we can Spell Pierce and still activate Kinnon. But it seems like we're going to counter the Joyra. Okay, they're swinging in. As turn. No blocks. Uh, no. Okay, can we do... I think we can do it like this, right? We can activate the Garen Break. Tap for double blue. Spell... Oops! God damn it. Oops. The intention was to disdainful stroke. Now we're going to Okay, well it doesn't matter too much because now that one resolves. And we're stroking them anyways. Yeah. So we messed up just a bit here. But that's why. I think this was actually it's not too not the worst because even though we don't get the trigger of Kinnon, it allows us to do this right now, right? Just with the one 
two, three, four. We are stealing. Yeah, let's steal three. One, two, three. And let's steal their utility creatures. Yep. Give me those, please. Ah, but. Yeah. That was most definitely a bit of a misplay. What are they oopsing about? Power Stone Shard, okay. Locking one of those. And. Oh, good game. Yeah, I don't think they have a way to come back from this. Bit of a punt, but it's okay. Okay, so this pretty much wraps up the games. As you've seen, the deck can do really powerful things really, really fast. And I think the deck will also just get better over time when we have more big dumb stuff to cheat out. Um, because there are not that many big creatures that we really want to cheat out. Uh, let's search for them, right? And those are pretty much our targets and this does seem like a lot, right? There are cards like Meteor Golem that you could include, but I, I usually like immediate uh, card draw or immediate killing of the opponent or protection. And um... Yeah, I think this will, as I said, this deck will get better over time. I hope you like the gameplay and I hope you enjoy the deck as much as I did when you play it for yourself and make your own tweaks to it. Anyways, uh, please like the video, please share the video, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.